Okay, so in the previous video, uh, what we worked on was linearizing our data. So we started with uh, our height versus fall time. We graphed it, realized a straight line did not fit our data uh, points or their error bars, but a power series one with a power of 0.5 did, which means this is a square root relationship where height litter, or sorry, the square root of height equals uh, fall time. Um, so if you imagine uh, undoing that for the X side, uh, that would mean squaring both sides. So height uh, is proportional to fall time squared, which led us to this idea that if we square all of our times, we should see a proportional relationship, which is what we got right here, where it's a straight line. I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh on my browser and see if this uh, weird formatting error fixes, where it's going clear on half my graph. Cool, uh, that's one graph, here's the other. All right, so that fixed it. So we can now see that there is a straight line that goes through all my data points in the error bars. Now, our goal is to figure out how to plot a min and max line of best fits. Um, so what that would look like is, remember, if we were drawing a minimum line of best fit, it goes from kind of the top end of our error bars down to the bottom end on this side. Uh, and for a maximum line of best fit, it goes from the bottom end right here to the top end right there. And it ends up looking something kind of like this for those min and max lines. So to do that, we're going to hack Google a little bit or Google Sheets. Um, so it's not designed to do this, but we're going to do it anyways. I'm going to go ahead and blow up my graph a little bit. So I'm going to make it much taller and larger for us to see um, because it's going to be hard to kind of see what's going on. But ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend there is a new data set that goes from the top of this error bar to the bottom of this error bar, and then another one that goes from the bottom of here to the top of here. So I'm going to go ahead and call that my minimum line of best fit and my maximum line of best fit. So the minimum is as flat as possible. So it starts high and ends low over here. So what that means is if my uncertainty or error bar size was 0.03, I'm going to take uh, the 0.2 here and I'm going to subtract 0 0.0 or sorry, add 0 0.03 so that I'm bumping it up um, on the low end, uh, but bringing it down on the high uh, end for X value. So we will say uh, 0.23. So I'm adding that uncertainty in. Um, and then on the other end, we subtract it out instead. And so that would be like 1.8 or so where it's literally this value minus the um, general uncertainty for the whole thing. Next, I'm gonna do the opposite. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and just uh, fix our graph to include that. Um, so you can either choose to completely re-highlight all of this and graph it from the beginning, or what you can do is you can go to Edit Chart, and we'll notice here in our setup in the data range, it's asking for column A and column B. Now I need to just adjust that B and say, go all the way over to column D and we're good. I go ahead and hit enter, it should apply it, and then I can close out. Oh, not quite yet. Uh, next thing I need to do is I go to series. Uh, we are now looking for our new series. It did not quite work. Ah, so uh, figure out what it was. Uh, Google used to, once you increase the data range, it used to uh, auto add some new X, uh, um, sorry, not X, uh, Y series right here. Uh, but we need to manually do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to add series. So I click on this uh, and I'm going to go ahead and select minimum because that's already there for what we're doing. Cool. So what we can see here, oh, and I did my math wrong because it was 0 0.03, not 0 0.3. Um, so in this case, that would be 2.07. Cool. So we can see that this red dot right here is at the top end of our error bar, and this red dot right here is at the bottom end of our error bar. We are now going to add in a trend line for that. Um, so that was a manually fit data point where we literally said, oh, if we want to make the slope less, um, at the biggest X value, we subtract the uncertainty. Um, at the lowest X value, we add in the uncertainty on the Y value, and that will kind of flatten the line. 
Uh, so I go back to edit charts, I go to customize, I go to series, and now under series, we have a new series called minimum. And I can go ahead and add in a trend line and we can see the minimum uh, trend line being added in. Uh, what I like to do is actually turn off the data point size so that I don't see those data points. It's just the line there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the maximum. So for the maximum, instead of uh, subtracting, uh, sorry, adding 0 0.03, I'm going to subtract 0 0.03. So we're looking at 0.17. And then here, instead of subtracting 0.03, I'm going to add the 0.03. So we're literally going from the lowest point to the highest point possible. Um, so that gives us 2.13. Uh, we need to go back to our graph and tell it under edit to add a new series. Our new series is called max because I labeled it as such. Uh, so it's the data right there. And we can see it added in a data point at the very top end right here and the very bottom end right here. Um, and again, I can go to customize and I can go to series and under series, instead of apply to all series, I'll just focus on my max series. Uh, and we can see that if I add in the trend line, um, we now have a maximum line of best fit. Now, all of your three trend lines are going to kind of overlap each other because this is such a precise, uh, what do you call that thing, simulation. Um, but the real purpose of this is so that we can get the equation of all those things. So back under series, I'm going to go to apply to series and I'm going to say for the label use equation. Now, now that we have the equation, we can see that the equation for our uh, proportionality was that 0.21 times, actually let me zoom in on this a little bit. Ooh. All right, here we go. So we can see that our normal trend line was 0.21 times x, where x was our height, um, plus uh, 0.011 or negative 0.0113 equaled, and then it doesn't really say it, but equaled uh, time squared. Um, so literally height is proportional to time squared in this case. Um, and we have that same uh, idea for each of these, but we are looking at slightly different slopes. So the maximum slope that fits our data is 0.218. The minimum slope that fits our data is 0.204. Um, and if we wanted to, we could scroll down to horizontal axis and put in zero here uh, to force it to show the origin and see that our maximum and minimum slope, or those are vice versa, so our minimum slope and our maximum slope um, contain the origin. And so we can prove that this is actually uh, a proportional relationship, at least for our data. We need to talk about the limitations of that later. That was a long introduction on mostly the mechanics and we'll work on the why we do this more as we go on. For now, focus just on the mechanics of actually doing this process. Um, if you need to see what's going on here zoomed in, I've done this um, with exaggerated data down here. So I don't think this is real data. I think I manipulated. Oh, I bumped up the error bar size to make it easier to see. Um, it's not the actual error bar size. Uh, but we can see that the maximum line uh, is this yellow line right here going from the bottom end all the way up to the top. And the minimum line is this one going from here to there on our linearized data um, where this is fall times squared is proportional to height. Um, so this is effectively what we are doing. It's just because our uncertainty or precision, uh, sorry, our uncertainty is so small or precision is so high uh, that our uh, all of our lines kind of overlap like this. That's actually a really good thing, um, even though it's annoying for actually trying to graph it, etc. Hope that helps on what to do. Um, I don't pretend that you understand everything, so we'll try and go over this uh, next class. I'll be there to answer questions. But use this as a first pass, um, and we'll we'll see where we can pick up from there.